Welcome back to another unboxing video. Uh, this time I have for you Empire's End by John D. Clare, put out by Brother Wise Games. John D. Clare is probably best known for his work with Mystic Veil. Vale. And this just showed up this week. I was pretty excited. It's one that uh, when it first came out, the mechanism, with the reverse bidding really caught my attention. And I'm looking forward to getting this onto the table. So let's take a look at the contents. For those of you, when you first get it, uh, don't worry. There is box lift, but that is because of the way it's packed up. Because once we get inside, you'll see what's going on. First off, we have the rule book. The rule book is pretty well laid out. I've been through it once. It, it takes you basically through every step. I, I feel like it's it's pretty well laid out. Now, without having gotten a, a game under my belt just yet, and having to go back and find some quick references, I can't say for certain. Uh, but they do have plenty of examples. They also have a glossary and an FAQ at the back, uh, which is always helpful. Here's why you have the box lift. You've got six layers of cardboard. Once you get these all punched out, it's not you're not going to have any lift because the nice built-in storage that came with the Kickstarter edition. Uh, let's take a look here if I can get the cardboard open. Just take a peek at how the quality is. Looks like it's going to be a pretty good thickness. Now, I did actually, and I'll show you this at the end of the video, I did the upgrade. So I've got the wooden tokens for this. So this, these aren't going to get punched up. These will get stored somewhere else. But you also have your four sets of city cards. The disaster side. And of course, your entire city here. Uh, four four exact copies there for you to create your city. And then you've got all this nice storage and one box for each player. You put your city in here. You can put all your tokens that you're gonna to need to start the game. Uh, I really like the compact feature of this. This game isn't gonna take up a lot of real estate on the table either. So uh, you've got four of those, really, really helpful to have. You've got another container here, and actually I plan on taking the fire tokens out and putting two per player. Score marker. I have to admit, I am a little worried about the score marker. I'm even having trouble getting out. I mean, that is, that's small. And I'm, I'm fearful of dropping it and losing it on the floor, or worse, having my dog come along and thinking it's a tasty treat. But, you know... It is what it is, you know. There's not a lot I can do about it, and I'm not going to replace it. Now, if you didn't do the upgrade, uh, these are the space counters. You can put this along the top of your cards so that it makes it nice and easy when you know that spot 7 is being affected. But again, if you did the upgrade, I'll show you that as well. You've got a, a nice neoprene mat. But they have a nice little storage in here. It's built in. A little recess there. I don't know if you can see it. So they sit in there nice and flat. Nice little recess here as well. And again, this is not taking up a lot of room. Here's the board. That's it. The artwork, uh, kind of muted colors in spots, but that's okay. I know during the campaign there was discussion about it a little being a little busy in spots, and by muting this color makes it easy to see the track here. So this is the two-player side, and here's the three- to four-player side. And the artwork actually changes. No, not, I guess it doesn't, my mistake. Uh, it's just, I, this, I thought this was different over here, but it is just because that track goes out a little bit further. So you get a little bit more of the artwork in this area. So, and then you've got, here's why the score marker has to be so small. You're tracking it in this little spot all the way around the board. You've got your player screens here, a nice little area for it to sit in as well. I have to say I was a little bit disappointed. My box came with a tiny ding and it actually translated into here and caught one of my screens. Actually, all of them eventually. Not a huge deal, but you know, when you get a new game, it's nice to not have them damaged. Your player colors on the outside of the screen, I do like that there are reminders on the inside of the screen. I haven't folded them up yet, obviously. Looks like they should stand okay when you're playing. In here, then, we have spaces for all of the 
different uh, problem cards, disaster cards that you're going to hit with. Uh, these are pretty tightly packed. I'm not going to waste your time trying to open these. Yeah, not going not gonna to do it. But uh, I'm assuming you know, this the whole pack bends, so they are pretty thin, which is good. I mean, you got to slide them under the cardboard anyways for it to work. You got a nice spot here for your uh, military cards. These I can't open easily. Let's see here. Well, now that I say that, there we go. And I'm assuming the other cards are going to be the same thickness. So not, not the thickest of cards. They actually feel a little bit thinner than some other games. I'm hoping that they'll hold up to multiple plays. You've got your wooden first player token. And then your wooden turn counter. So I like the way they're printed. It looks nice. A uh, good tactile feeling with that wood. So the base game, you know, you'd have all that cardboard to punch out. But I did do, like I said, I got the, the upgrade. I'm not going to show you all of them. But here are some of the wooden tokens for keeping track of the resources. And you can see the thickness here. They are double-sided. They're actually fairly light, in my opinion, for a wooden token. But uh, they will do their, they, they will work well. And, and there, again, it's something about that fuel compared to cardboard. You're going to be handling these a lot when you're making your bids. You don't want to have to worry about the cardboard getting damaged or worn out. Along with that, with the bid, or with the uh, uh, paying into the extra and getting the deluxified version, you get four of these play mats. And I know the discussion. Uh, when they put these out too, was that it was a little bit busy. It seems like they muted this part a little bit so that when you put your city cards on there, they're going to pop nice so you're going to be able to see them. I usually don't do play mats, and my gaming table does have a, a neoprene cover, so picking up cards is is convenient on there, but I was thinking, you know, taking it to a friend's house or uh, just to be able to have the marker up there already, one less thing to set out. It wasn't that much more to go to the deluxe version, so I thought, why not? So, there you have it. That is Empire's End. I am looking forward to that. I've done a lot of different Civilization games in my in my time. And, you know, I've never thought about what happens when they start to fall apart. So I'm very excited to see how this mechanism works. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and let other people know about it. And look for more unboxing in the future here. I've got a, quite a few Kickstarters on their way. Uh, and I am stalking them online right now for tracking. Until next time, keep enjoying those games. Talk to you later.